Gotta get that boom, boom, boom. Gotta get that boom, boom, boom. Gotta get that boom, boom, boom. Gotta get that burp, burp. Please don't copyright me. Ooh. Oh. Hold on. Ugh. Hey guys, it's not so slay. Wait. Hey guys, it's not so slay here. I'm back with another video on today. We. This will be a little girl talk slash let's talk mental health. Oh no, this chair is. Oh no, hold on. It's creepy. So, in this video, I'm just going to be, like, giving y'all a little glimpse into my mental health, like, my experience with mental illness and um, just some advice and, like, some um, terminology and stuff like that. That's about it. Um, and I want you guys to comment down below, like, any other videos y'all would like to see. I know I do like so many different kind of videos, but this is just me. I'm not this one genre, so, you know, but we want to slay all day though, honey. We want to slay all day, period. All right. Anyway, um, and yeah, don't take my advice or anything I say like too, 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 too serious because like you're really supposed to talk to a professional about, you know, mental illness and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know everything. So this is just all research and just my experience in general. My personal experience with uh, mental illness, it really started when I was like, like it really, really, really got bad when I turned 14 around that time when puberty hit. Um, and I would get like waves of happiness and waves of sadness. Like I would feel like I was manic. There was different factors that came into it. Like I was getting bullied not really having stable friendships, didn't really grow up with stable relationships. So like I would pick friends that weren't stable for me, that wasn't really nice to me uh, per se. And yeah, I would accept things that I shouldn't have. I didn't have any boundaries. I didn't set any boundaries with people except, you know, big things, but like it wasn't, I didn't really, have boundaries so that's why a lot of things was going wrong <laughs> then i had a really bad breakup and that's when i my eating pattern was horrible when i tell you i lost weight i lost so much weight that literally i look sick like i was a bobblehead you think i'm a bobblehead now girl <laughs> At. it was really sad like my face was sunken in and then I started feeling like I had to control anything that was around me so I started like um so I started with my hair cutting my hair dyeing my hair doing all kinds of stuff with my hair um going off of impulse dating this person that person I never was a whore or nothing but like oh as soon as somebody shows some type of infatuation or interest in me I will go with that instead of like, you don't even like that person. You don't even find them really that attractive. You just want love. You just want, you know, whatever. You're not, you're just settling because you don't want to be alone. You're just doing everything because you don't think you're going to have another chance or stuff like that. Um, growing up, I did go through like suicidal thoughts, like since I was nine, like, um, and I, I like during college <clears throat> like recently I did um attempt you know but y'all I don't want to get too into that because I don't want to trigger nobody but it was like a lot of factors going into that not only I felt misunderstood I felt misunderstood I felt alone I felt like uh I felt terrible by myself like I still had confidence but I had I was so broken hey y'all so um basically what I was saying in there it was like I was functioning with a broken heart like I'm heartbroken from parents heartbroken well heartbroken from family members heartbroken from friends still heartbroken from past heartbreaks um 
it was extremely hard for me to function the way that I was functioning and also being undiagnosed and um just know like it's okay don't be afraid to get diagnosed and don't be afraid to talk to somebody about it because if you don't talk about it it will go unlooked and unseen and it you can develop like it can develop more mental health illness or you can get worse like and then all your thoughts will actually come true so like bro i'm telling you speak to somebody please it was so weird like i was still modeling and doing stuff like that but i was so insecure when it came to my emotions and letting people in because every time i let somebody in or get close to me they would do some weird stuff to me and it would hurt me like really bad like and i'm very sensitive so you could like you could do like the slightest thing like change your plan and not really fully explain to me why and it will make me upset but as time went on as i went to therapy and stuff like that like um i was diagnosed with ocd and i f i officially got my diagnosis like yesterday which is so great because like i've been so i've been overthinking it so bad um but yeah like my sense of control my feeling of needing to control things came from trauma or like my obsession sometimes is not something that I want to be not obsessed with but like to be thinking about over and over again like intrusive thoughts um and if you have intrusive thoughts and like really bad thoughts and sad like it's not really like it's not you you know intrusive thoughts let's put up the definition for intrusive yeah you don't really think about oh let me think like this let me think like that no it just comes it's like a voice or like a thought that just pops in your head and it and it can make you feel like a horrible person when you're really not normally people think ocd is kind of like um oh let me clean let me be so tidy da, 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 da. i'm telling you if y'all see my vlogs you know how many times i have clean my room like in a week like two weeks go by or a week go by my room is a hot mess it looks terrible it looks like i don't love myself like it's bad but i'm very i'm very out it's like when i'm feeling sad or down i really don't have energy to clean but then i would overthink it i'd be like oh you gotta clean you gotta clean you gotta clean you gotta clean but i would be obsessed with the thought but like i would be thinking about it but i physically can't do it because my that's just how you, my body works <laughs> but people think being clean is ocd and that's really not it it's an obsession compulsive disorder it's not clean 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 like you can have that obsession but that's not really what it is and so i got this like not diagram but like um this thing i'm gonna put it on the screen for you guys but uh so what ocd really looks like? obsessions could be contamination themes harm to self or others aggressive themes sexual themes forbidden thoughts symmetry urges and need to tell ask or confess like like you feel like you did something when you really didn't do nothing but your brain tells you you did something wrong it just be bad compulsions washing or cleaning repeating things checking like checking the doorknob three times or looking at like gotta check the door make sure the door lock like you gotta just do too, too many things or you gotta like make your bed over like five times because that's what you gotta do or you gotta tap something i don't know or touching could be a compulsion ordering or arranging things hoarding or praying the only thing that really helped me with my compulsions are my overthinking and my obsessions lately is going to therapy um i've been in in and out of therapy my whole life 
Um, but I really took the initiative this year to like really get into the nitty gritty. Like we gotta go back in time. We gotta go back when I was a kid. We gotta really get to the nitty gritty because I'm not, nothing's truly helping me. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes therapists, they think because you're pretty or they think because you can speak really clearly, like you're intelligent, that you do not need help. And that's not the thing. You actually still like need help. Like just because I'm pretty don't mean I can't get the same care that you would give to somebody going crazy in a hospital. I need that same care. Like, cause yeah. Just because I look like this on the outside don't mean that there's not something going on in the inside. But I would definitely recommend therapy. And if you don't like a therapist, go to another therapist. Like, that's, keep trying. If you want to change, if you want better for yourself, do that. Like, work hard for yourself. You gotta want to live. You gotta want to love yourself more than more than feeling sad you gotta want more for yourself than to just be sad all the time just to help with like social anxiety and stuff like that you can start working like working helped me um my first job was at um a laundry mat and i had to talk to people i had to ask them questions um i had to answer questions um i built relationships with people and I was able to free I was able to get used to talking to people and it made it easier for me to go into like um like Dunkin Donuts or something like that and ask or order my stuff. Um I still struggle with like social anxiety like and talking and like even speaking up for myself and stuff like that. Um but it's become a lot easier since I've been working. Because you have to. You have to stand up for yourself. You got to ask questions. Like, that's what life is about. Like, you have to speak up. Because when you don't speak up, a lot of things go wrong. So, definitely, like, practice. Like, if you don't work, then start, like, at school or something. Raise your hand more. Like, try to make yourself uncomfortable to be comfortable in this world. You can't just stay shuttled in in the house all day and expect your social anxiety to change or for you to feel better you have to actually want better and to do better so yeah how to deal with loneliness so i'm telling you this like i i feel lonely a lot a lot um but that doesn't mean like i'm always like lonely like you know um like dealing with loneliness Okay, because I'm the only child, y'all. Because I'm the only child, most of the time I did feel lonely. Um, um, but at a certain point, I just, I just had to look at it a little differently. Just because I'm alone doesn't mean I'm lonely. That doesn't mean I can't call somebody up right now and be like, "Hey, like, what you doing today?" Da da da. Like, you, you know. If you feel lonely, reach out to somebody. Talk to somebody about it. Or because it can help you out and stuff like that. I personally don't always do this because I I don't like to feel like a burden or I don't like to feel like, oh, I'm begging, you know, for attention or something like that. But you should, you know, at least if you don't ever tell somebody how you feel about something, look at the cat. Get yourself down from there. You mean bad. If you don't ever, uh, if you don't ever tell somebody how you feel or tell your, the people around you how you feel, they won't know. They can't just tell from, because most of us with mental illness are extremely functional and we, we don't look like we have mental illness. So a lot of the times people don't know and people are not mind readers, they're not God. So you have to speak, you have to advocate for yourself. And also like, even when you feel lonely, try to like 
do things that you like doing you know sometimes it's okay to be alone but it's not okay to be feel lonely so try to have more of a a, a relationship with yourself build a relationship with yourself because once you build a relationship with yourself, you won't need so much validation and so much, like, too many people, like, being in your presence in order for you to feel seen. And sometimes even when you're around a bunch of people, you're going to still probably feel lonely because you don't have a good connection with yourself. So, yeah. And your brain could trick you and tell you you're lonely and nobody loves you, but that is not true. Mental stability. So, like, I would say, like, if you feel mentally unstable, like, or, like, say if your ment mental is, like, getting, like, messed up from school or getting, getting, or, like, your mind, uh, or you feel, like, overwhelmed from school or... You feel overwhelmed from work. You feel overwhelmed just from life in general because we're all growing and we're all learning as we go. No matter how how old you get, you're still learning. You're still growing. So we're all growing. So it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to be like, okay, right now, I need to, I need to, you know, take a nap. Right now, I need to just watch my anime. I need to watch my TV real quick and just chill out for right now. I don't got to overwork myself right now. I know we're all in a rat race or we're all trying to make it out or we're all trying to make it, like, to make everybody, not make everybody proud, but meet a goal in life. But that goal can't be so much important more than your mental health because yeah you could get all a's and stuff like that or you could try to strive for getting all a's and stuff like that but if your mental is not okay and you trying to force like getting work done and stuff like that you're neglecting yourself at the end of the day do some self-care um and life is not supposed to be sad and depressing and and hard life is supposed to be a lot more easier than what we we condition our minds to think um there's a lot of people who have easy lives but they have problems and stuff going on you know it's never perfect but they don't have as many problems but they don't have as many problems because sometimes they they take breaks they manage their time in a way where they can have fun and they can work hard at the same time so don't overwork yourself because don't overwork yourself because oh i gotta make it i gotta make it i gotta make it but the most successful people in this world they take breaks beyonce took a break rihanna took a break people take breaks so don't force yourself to do something because you want to be on a different level in life like it's okay to be normal like we don't have to like and that's what i'm saying another thing social media can really mess up your whole mental because i had speaking of that i had to delete instagram for a while like I've been off of there for a week and I feel so much better. Like every time I do this cleanse from Instagram, I feel so much better. Like TikTok doesn't give me that like depressing feeling as much as Instagram does. And I don't force yourself to be on a different level or anything like that. Be patient with yourself. Oh, excuse me but yeah that's the end of this video um and i hope y'all like this video um i didn't really do nothing in here this is not like really my normal schedule my normal um oh also i wanted to show y'all this also i'm gonna put it on the screen all right heal yourself but don't rush help people but have boundaries love others but don't let them harm you love yourself but don't become egoistical I think that's how you pronounce it. Stay informed, but don't overwhelm yourself. Um, and one that's um personally like 
feeling me is stay informed but don't overwhelm yourself because like once i learn something i'll be like oh like i just like try to learn so much at one time and i try to do this and that and da, 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 and i'd be just all over everywhere because i'm trying to do everything perfectly when like in reality nobody's perfect and just because you're informed about something doesn't mean that you always going to make the right choice. Yeah. But okay, y'all. I got this. This is the last part of the video. I got this hoodie. I wanted to show y'all this hoodie. I got from Shein. And it says knowledge is power. And it has like power on the hood. Um, and I feel like being more, being knowledgeable will really help you in life. Like knowing yourself and learning yourself and learning what to do and what, not what to do and what not to do, but like learning the ins and outs and learning yourself more, um, can really help you, um, know others and understand others by knowing yourself you can understand others and you can be empathetic to other people you can help other people by knowing more we have so much information at our fingertips and we don't use it and we need to start using these things so we can help others we can make this world a a, a better place um, if you're just going off of what somebody else told you about mental illness, like saying it's not true, it's not this and that, or even just anything in general, going off of other people's opinions and stuff like that is, is you're not being strong. You're not, you don't have power in it. If you don't study and you're not educated about things, you know, then you're just going to be like um, ignorant and being ignorant can hurt somebody. But at, all right, this is the end of the video. I had a great day. I hope you had a great day. And bye. <laughs> para, para, paradise, para, para, paradise. Don't copy, copyright me.